Hello, this short video is going to give you an example of using cookie cutter to scaffold your Python data science project. As you'll see from my terminal screen here, I've already created a Python virtual environment. I've used the python minus m vn command, and I've created a virtual environment inside my vn demo directory. I have changed directories in there. I've taken a look at the contents of that directory. I've activated that environment, and I've also deactivated it. So I'm going to go ahead here, clear my screen, and go ahead and reactivate my Python environment. Great. The first thing I'm going to do here is pip install cookie cutter. This will install cookie cutter locally. It will download all the necessary packages. This should take just a minute here. Uh, it's asking me to upgrade pip. This is a really common thing, so I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. All right, now while that's working, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Cookie Cutter. Uh, you'll see Cookie Cutter comes from this website. Uh, there's great documentation for it right here at drivendata.github.io slash cookie cutter dash data science. That's the one that the uh, scaffold that I will actually be looking at in this demo. Once you have Cookie Cutter installed, uh, it's very, very easy. You can install that with pip install cookie cutter like I did, uh, or there's a very specific way to do that with Conda. To do the data science version of cookie cutter, all we have to do is issue this command. Let me clear my screen here so you can clearly see. The command is cookie cutter, which will now be on your path. And we are going to use https github.com slash driven data slash cookie cutter dash data dash science. If you go back and look at cookie cutter, you can find out, right? So we have cookie cutter data science here. Uh, if you go into the cookie cutter <coughs> documentation, you can find out that there are quite a few other types of cookie cutters. Cookie cutter for data science is a wonderful starting point for us. So I'm going to go ahead and do this right here. Hit enter. You've downloaded this before. Is it okay to re-download it? Sure. Project name. Uh, we are going to call this VM demo. Well, actually, we're not. Uh, I'm actually going to call this project code. Why am I going to do this? Because the project name determines the directory name where everything is stored. So I'm going to go ahead and store this in a directory called code. Uh, the repo name, you can call it code. Enter your name, a description, a demo of cookie cutter with the end. Uh, we'll use no license file. We're not going to set up anything for AWS. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use Python 3, and you'll see I now have a code directory. I can go into code, and I have this wonderful directory with data, a license, a make file, a readme file, docs, models, notebooks, references, reports, uh, and all these other pieces. The important things to know here uh, are our data directory. First and foremost, we have four directories in there. The first one is external. That's where you'll store external data. We have interim data. That's data you're working on or is in process. We have process data. That is final data that has been manipulated and cleaned. And we have raw data, which is our storage point for all raw data dumps. We want to make sure we're always saving our data in the right directory. This will help us manage our data and ensure that we don't lose information along the way. We also have a docs directory uh, where we can go in and we can build documentation. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this short screencast. Uh, similar for models, we're not going to cover this here, but this is where I'd store all my Python-based models. Notebooks is where we'll store our Jupyter notebooks as we start working. References are exactly what they say. And of course, every good data science project has a question it is answering. We would answer those questions and store the results in communications inside our reports directory. So now I have cookie cutter set up. I'm in a Python virtual environment. Uh, this is wonderful. The only thing I'm missing at this point, I have everything going. Do I have a git directory? No, I do not. Or a git repo? I do not. So the last thing I have to do and what we will do in our next video is create this repository.